Hi, uh, welcome to uh, chapter 8, uh, Distribution Channel Management. In the previous chapters, we focused on the managing room inventory availability and uh, how to establish rates based on the market segmentations. You will use different distribution channels to target best marketing segments for your best price value propositions. This chapter will give information about uh, some of those distribution channels. Now, let us start to understand a little bit about the historical perspective. Uh, changes, uh, uh, of course, over time. Uh, the initially, distribution channel was not an issue in the hotel industry because there was no other channel than person arriving and reserving the room right there at the uh, reception. Over time, with reliable mail services, some of, form of distribution channels start to show up. They were basically some form of uh, travel agents and travel wholesalers uh, that start to show up and book rooms on behalf of their customers. Now, travel wholesaler is basically a large volume uh, intermediary that sells the smaller travel intermediaries. Now, basically they sell like thousands of rooms from the hotels and they sell the smaller uh, the travel agents, maybe like 100 rooms, 50 rooms uh, sm in a smaller quantity. Now, later starting from uh, airline industry, uh, airline industry basically started what we call the GDS or uh, 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 global distribution system. Think for a second, like person wants to go say uh, New York using an airline A and will be back in a week but using a different airline, say airline B, due to time, scheduling, etc. How are you going to sell that ticket? So they develop GDS to electronically communicate their availability and reserve from each other. Now, later, many travel agents start to use uh, such as car rentals, hotels, etc. Uh, major players in GDS were uh, Saver, like by American Airlines, uh, Amadeus by uh, Air France and Lufthansa, Galileo by United and British, British Airways. Uh, initially, these were independent and costly systems, but uh, today, uh, IDS, the internet uh, distribution systems, connect all of them to each other, uh, including the OTAs, of course. Now, there is two important things I want you to understand. First, distribution channels such as franchisees, CRS, central reservation systems, travel agents, or various OTAs generate room sales for your property. But they are not doing that for free. Second thing you need to understand which is related to this, it will cost you to use their services. OTAs such as Booking.com or Expedia allows users to search uh, many travel options and book for them. They could make money from traveler booking and supplier that provides, uh, for example, in, in our cases, the rooms. Uh, when people do uh, direct booking using your own website, property's own website, or, or own website or to call the property directly, there will be no intermediaries, right? That is the reason we use net ADR yield uh, to, to, uh, uh, to uh, understand the cost associated with them. Now, net ADR yield, uh, we talked about in, in chapter four, uh, shows percentages of sale of distribution channels to a normal room rate. First, we need the net room rate, meaning how much we get after the distribution channel cost. In second step, we divide net room rate to our regular rate, and it gives us net ADR yield. Now, uh, there is a, uh, uh, I have a one problem and solution in, in chapter eight, apply what you know video, but let, let's, let's look at the, some of the example. In this example, for example, as you can see, Channel A gives us better value. Can we say higher than that ADR yield better for us? Uh, yes and no. Uh, it will be an oversimplification and the thing it like that, very low standard ADR with high net ADR yield could be as bad as high standard ADR with much lower net ADR yield. In our example, because we are comparing exactly the same thing, then we can say yes, in this case, higher net ADR yield is better. However, 
we still need to consider GOP bar, right? Gross operating per available room, meaning cost associated with selling those rooms. You might say that, then why are we accepting lower pay than our standard rate? Answer is simple. Uh, they bring people we cannot otherwise able to get. Now, overall, we can talk about two different information distribution channels. Non-electronic distribution channels are those in, in which room rate and availability information is delivered to buyers in more personal level. Okay? In, in today's hotel environment, there is no lower cost distribution channel than on property transient room buyers. Uh, this consists of uh, the following, like walk-ins and checkouts. Uh, when we are saying like people walk in our property or people are checking out, like they are already on the property, so they stop the search room. Most likely they are looking for immediate purchase, especially in the walk-ins. They are there to buy or check out for the maybe future. And for the walk-ins, they are there to buy. They are there to use it now, today. So there is no cancellation or lost rooms inventory. Because they are there they are already experienced the property. They are looking like assuming, uh, looking around what kind of property it is. So assuming your front desk employee does a decent job, it should be easy sell. And most of you with the sales backgrounds knows that face-to-face uh, -face transactions have a higher success rate with the potential of upselling as well. Uh, direct sale or... Um, Booking as uh, direct sale or booking, as the name implies, then uh, uh, from non electronic perspective means phone sales. Uh, let us not forget, while many of you live in an internet times, there are still many people use traditional phone for information and reservations. As a, a future manager, you need to be sure to train all your employees for this kind of transactions and sales opportunities. Uh, on on property group sales, uh, as you might have guessed, that incorporates your property's group sales department, where they directly communicate with different groups. Uh, when working with groups, you should always assess other departmental revenue possibilities, right? Let's not forget, we talked about this before uh, uh, in many examples. Sometimes we get more people for a lower price because we assume that they might spend more on the food and beverage and spa and other uh, things. But basically in group sales, you should, not only group sales, but overall you should always assess other uh, departmental revenues. Uh, lastly, as a, a revenue manager, you must ensure that your property is fairly and fully represented by your local convention and visitor bureau. Visitor bureau is a non-profit entity. Uh, how can you do that? You can do so by like staying active with the bureau, serving on its board of directors, uh, uh, taking all reasonable steps to promote its effort and ensure uh, uh, its success. It is extremely, extremely important to effectively manage electronic distribution channels, considering how much of your business is or will be coming from these channels. Even if you are not working for a brand Right now, it is most likely you will be working for uh, one in the future. And that brand most likely develop a central reservation system and your property some kind of agreement to use it. Uh, central reservation system is basically accept reservation for the brand. You belong, like you know, you're part of Marriott or Hilton. It could be bought from electronic or non-electronic sources, meaning your guests might access access your brand's website and made reservation or call brand's, uh, let's say, call center phone number and made a reservation. However, the reservation made uh, uh, by uh, CRS system will transfer those data to your property management system. This is a two-way system, uh, usually, I mean, or uh, majority of the places right now. Uh, two-way systems meaning you maintain all your information in uh, PMS, such as your rates, availability, etc., and those information could be seen by CRS and updated minute by minute. Uh, in addition, CRS could provide data 
to you uh, uh, such as uh, uh, reports such as reservation made or cancelled, ADR and revenues, length of stays, reservation sources, etc. So you need to be aware all of the all those fees associated accepting reservation and learn all revenue optimization feature in in those systems. Um, we talked about the global distribution systems before. Uh, while it originated with airline industry, it, it usually incorporates car rentals and hotels. It primarily serves travel resellers, such as travel agents and travel wholesalers, uh, but still very important tool for revenue managers to consider. You should always be aware of fees and bookings generated by them. As you might realize, I'm repeating the same thing over and over again, right? How much business you get and how much is going to cost to you. Now, majority of you born in the internet era and you don't probably know times without the internet, right? As you can assume, more than 50-60% of the people goes online for searching or booking rooms. Uh, there are many challenges, but also opportunities associated using IDS or uh, Internet Distribution System as a distribution channel. Uh, we can divide IDS or internal distribution system in three major approaches. First one is the property control sites. Uh, there are some properties with their uh, property website, meaning web addresses and content 100% controlled by hotels management teams. Majority of the pro pro uh, properties uh, might not have an own website, or even if they have, it's like a more of a promotion, not uh, very functional. My personal opinion that if you can afford, if you are big enough, that each property should have fully functioning website to be successful. However, uh, it could benefit the property or at least not harm the property. So, uh, for example, I mean, the reason I'm saying that sometimes you put the website and people get they are frustrated and they decide to go some other places. So you have to have a good, well-designed, fully functioning website. So uh, what do we need to do? Like, for example, website should have a good address to be remembered, good names, right? You should have easy to use a PMS or CRS interface. That is extremely important. You and your team should have a full control and should be able to make changes as needed, promotions, etc., whatever you want to change in the websites. And you need to able to measure effectiveness and maintaining cost versus benefits. I mean, if the, your website bringing, I'm just making up, $1,000 uh, uh, profit, but if you are spending $2,000 a month to maintain, you know, it doesn't make sense. So you should always do uh, uh, cost-benefit analysis. The next one is, of course, uh, third-party control ones, or what we call travel intermediaries. Hotel doesn't have a direct control on the website or the content, but uses their resources for a fee. If you recall uh, our earlier conversation of the net rate, net, net rate was the net money you receive after you pay fees, right? So in this case, we can call a net rate as a like wholesale rate as well. In a merchant model, Intermediary act as a wholesaler, meaning they buy at the wholesale rate and uh, sell it to buyers at retail rate. Uh, depending on your size, power, and pre-negotiated terms, it could range from 15% to 35%. Now, there are some issues hotel industry always try to reduce related to merchant uh, uh, approach, merchant uh, model. Uh, first is what we call perishable inventory. Right? You all know that by now, this is a major challenge for revenue managers. If you cannot sell it today, it is gone. In merchant model, uh, third-party reseller pays only when room sold, not like traditional tour operators. Traditional tour operators used to share the risk with you, but they don't. Basically, they just put in your uh, their site. If it sells, they, they make money. The second thing is what we call the reference price. Uh, if you recall from earlier chapters, uh, we talk about the reference price. Let, let's say our price is 300, okay? And we gave them 25% discount. So basically, third-party seller makes money if they sell anything more than 225, which is the discounted price. 
if they decide to publish the price, say 280, and when people search, they will see your price is 300, but third party is selling for 280, exactly the same room. In the eye of the customer, new reference price for your room is 280. So it creates both short term and long term issues. Uh, one other thing is the arbitrage. If, uh, arbitrage was, uh, from what I believe we talk about the first chapter, is a buying low and selling high at the same time. That is what the merchant model does in a sense, right? While, while we assume third party brings additional rooms, sometime considering reference price discussion and arbitrage discussion, they become our competitor because people buy from their side instead of buying directly uh, from us. Uh, you are already aware of the net ADR yield and, and third-party merchant models increase distribution channel costs and uh, end up with the lower net ADR yield. And uh, one other thing is the customer ownership, uh, meaning third-party have all the information from guests and may have limited uh, share with you. So more data revenue manager has, better prediction they can make. And finally, uh, referral sites become popular. What they do is they search whole web for all available data and shows all available prices. So people choose lowest price and this might trigger uh, commoditization. That's, that's a major issue as well. Um, under the opaque model, room buyers don't know the name of brand until sale is finalized. It could happen in an auction or bid format. In an auction format, price are set with certain explanation, but it is not giving uh, the property information. If customer accept the price, hotel's name revealed. In a bid, you name uh, your own price given the area and quality level, like how many stars. Then uh, you bid the price. If their bid is accepted, then they are told uh, the hotel name, the customer is giving the hotel name. Overall, uh, they are evolving both their businesses, their fees, and uh, you need to understand them as a value to your business. But you should consider all aspects of distri different distribution channels and determine the impact they have on your business. However, we cannot ignore OTAs, right? For example, they spent more on marketing than all of the hotel industry combined last year. Think about it, like they spend about $3.2 billion, if I remember correctly. So one thing a late old brands try to control is enforcing what we call is the rate parity, meaning the price OTAs can post on their site. This way they try to control arbitrage, reference price, referral sites issues. Now, this is uh, uh, about the topic we uh, got so far. I'm just going to give you some principle for the distribution channel management. The first uh, two important factors on distribution channel. Let's not forget how much is going to cost and how much revenue they can generate. Second, considering distribution channels can uh, access to more people, they should be used also for promotion purposes. Third, we as managers or owners needs to understand how much additional revenue generated because of our brand affiliation. Fourth, you should always test non-electronic distribution systems, for example, using Secret Shopper to measure their attitude, quality, knowledge, information accuracy, etc. Fifth, periodically check the contribution from electronic distribution channels. You need to both check fees and how much they contribute. Periodically, non, non like as 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 uh, as much as you can. Uh, sixth is the depending on the property size. Uh, you should have all well designed website and promoted everywhere if you can. Like but once again, if you can, uh, for smaller properties it might not be very easy, but it is uh, especially after certain size you have to also uh, incorporate with your PMS and CRS systems. This will generate one of your high, highest ADR yields. Uh, next one is the you should check electronic distribution channels uh, sites to see if their information is accurate for your property. You should have some kind of report. Some of your employees goes out to distribution channels, Expedia, the booking.com, etc. to see 
everything uh, the way it's supposed to be. Uh, whenever possible, uh, you should avoid merchants and OPEC systems and look for commission-based partnership. So basically, uh, you are not giving them with a the discount, but if they sell something, you give commission to them. Uh, try to get uh, future business directly from, uh, especially for the people already stayed or staying in your property, like Vulcans and, and or already stayed, they left, check out, and etc. You have to always uh, aggressively uh, promote to them. And how are you going to do all these and more? You should establish periodical high return on investment trainings. Training, train, train. Training is very uh, important part of uh, our business. Thank you for listening.